Hello my friends, it's been a while and uh, hence I will have more finished objects, I believe. I have a few, I have many, I have many projects. Uh, I have uh, some finished objects, uh, namely four, four finished objects. And then I also have many, pro many uh, whips and I have uh, quite a few acquisitions since last time. And it's not going to be like that all the time. And we will start with finished objects. I will start with something that uh, last time was kind of like uh, half done and uh, literally 50% and uh, now it's 100% done and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sad that it happens this way, but on the other hand, I'm happy that I had time to test it and to, to report to you, not that only I'm happy to have my finished object, but also that some things kind of went wrong. Uh, it's this socks. Um, it was uh, a design by Ukrainian uh, by Ukrainian designer. I don't remember her uh, Instagram handle now. I will leave it in the description. Uh, the reason I don't like it, it's not because of the design. Uh, it's because of the yarn, I believe. They might seem huge to you, and they are. Uh, here, like this part, I believe that I managed to wear them. I wore them a few times around the house. They started to felt here. Probably you can see. Uh, it's not a problem for me. I believe that felting for socks is the best way to go, especially on the on the bottoms, because this way it becomes uh, more sturdy and more uh, warm. Um, the issue is here. Only one time I wore them and they were okay. I wore them to bed. I woke up with them being super huge here. So it's kind of like they don't hold the shape anymore. I believe it's the this is Drops Nord uh, color 04, uh, like one of the gray colors, but a little bit darker. And um, Everyone was so excited, like everyone was telling me that Drops Nord is so nice for socks and everything, cheap and cheap and nice, basically. And um, yeah, I'm not a fan. Uh, I don't know if it's this particular design together with the Nord or something, but th they are so huge here. I put them on to sleep and they just twist around my ankles, twist around my foot in general, because also here they became a little bit bigger. I'm knitting another pair of socks. I will show them to you a little bit later in the, pro in the whips. And um, yeah, that one, I hope it will go better because it's different yarn and different, but who knows. Second finished object is the one that I'm super excited about. It's this uh, turtle dove cardigan by Melissa Clulo. I knitted it in, um, in Drops Air, the gray, uh, pearl gray color. I love this shape. It's absolutely beautiful. I will insert a photo of me uh, trying it on. And um, I just, I love the end result. But then again, I'm not a fan of the, of the yarn. And um, the, the thing was that this cardigan is so simple and the construction is so simple and so beautiful because of that. And I believe that this design can really benefit from better yarn. Uh, better in the sense of stitch definition, because here uh, drops uh, air. First of all, it's very fluffy. It's blown yarn, and uh, as far as I know, and um, the stitch definition is not great. You cannot see it very well. Uh, the twisted rib that is here and on uh, on the sleeves, on the bottom, and on the placket. Um, it's not as visible as I would like it to be, and in general, it was not the best. The best experience to knit with it, so I'm planning to re-knit it, and this is the only uh, design as of now that I would love to re-knit straight ahead. The design, uh, the pattern, I took from this magazine, from Lina magazine number, I don't know, uh, Autumn 2023. Uh, it's as I said, Melissa Clulo, and. Um, an amazing thing happened and I saw that she published it and it became um, a free pattern on her Ravelry. So to all of you, my biggest recommendations, very nice, uh, relaxed, very stylish cardigan. Uh, it kind of has this like a little bit of a bomber shape and I really love it. And I love it in this color, just that I'm not a fan of the yarn. And the next two things are uh, children clothes for my niece. I saw this design uh, on um, the podcast uh, of uh, Woozy by Celine and Celine uh, made it also for some child in her life and I just loved it and I have a book of children's patterns but in the end in this sense I just I fell in love with this one and I needed to buy it so uh, I mean the pattern uh, so this the first one is Dagmar's shirt so it's a little bit wrinkled because I was already planning to pack it to send it to my uh, family in Ukraine 
um, Dagmar's uh, shirt here. Uh, this is size for uh, nine, 12 months. Uh, I counted that uh, obviously this year she will not need it because it's merino, it's uh, um, baby merino from drops. She will not need it this year, but uh, next year exactly autumn will come to Ukraine and she will be wearing it. So I, I hope so. I hope it will fit her by then. And uh, beautiful design, beautiful pattern. Uh, first time knitting children's clothes and uh, it was so kind of nice, rewarding, cute, but also a little bit a little bit hectic because it's everything is so tiny so it's a little bit difficult and the second thing i also saw it from uh, celine i just basically copied the whole outfit but it's different size it's the size for one year i believe or maybe a little bit more so it's quite big uh, it's this bear uh, bonnet uh, bear ear bonnet or something like that uh, i don't remember the exact name it's from knitting for olive uh, their pattern. I knitted it in uh, drops flora white and also uh, with a little bit of um, mohair from uh, uh, Cecia. It's uh, Vivienne by Cecia and uh, it's white color that I'm using in another sweater. I just used a little bit and I think that for a hat it's quite cute and um, first of all that yeah of course obviously this this hat is super cute i haven't done the best job on the i cord uh, edging here uh, just because i got a little bit confused but i didn't have much time to fix it so i think it's it's going to be okay it's not that visible but the funniest thing is that i remember that uh, when i was little i also had a uh, like kind of this type of hat with this uh, like a bonnet hat and it was also quite fluffy so i think that I hope that it will fit her well and I hope that uh, her family will like this and um, yeah I'm looking really looking forward to knitting more children things because uh, there are many children being born around me uh, between my family and my friends and uh, friends in Ukraine friends in Italy yeah uh, so many new babies uh, great news and um, yeah really looking forward I have a book by uh, Claudia Quintanilla that is called making memories it's beautiful I will speak about it in some other video because otherwise this one will become super long uh, but yeah I, I I'm really looking forward to needing more things from there and there as far as I know they have like mommy and me options so not in the book but in the in the book you have children version of uh, some of the sweaters that Claudia has in the uh, adult sizes on her website so really looking forward also to discover this part as well okay now let's go to whips I'm trying to kind of uh, pass faster through it because the previous uh, vlogs because I film it both in English and in Ukrainian and uh, last one was just oh my god it took me so long to edit both of them uh, so I was speaking about how I was knitting uh, salty day sweaters by Kutava Kika in my previous video and I said that I need to remake it with mohair and um, yeah that's that's what i'm that's what i'm doing uh, i uh, received mohair from again this uh the same one that i was just speaking about it's uh, italian brand cesia it has uh, mm, this uh, it has few types of mohair uh in uh, production but the one that i like is uh, vivian and uh, i bought the white color and so here is where i where i'm at I hope you can see well. Uh, it looks like a mess because it's not blocked, obviously, and this, especially these parts with cables, uh, they look quite weird. Uh, also, the sleeve, because <laughs> again, once again, it's unblocked. But so, uh, what happened? I was knitting it and I was quite on track, and then I lost the game of yarn chicken that I didn't know I was playing. So, what happened? Uh, when I arrived to the sleeve, to the first sleeve, I started checking how much yarn I have because normally I don't take out all of the yarn that I have all of the yarn balls um, from the drawer where I keep my I don't even have a stash kind of like I have yarn for projects like mostly I know what I'm going to knit from it and it's just stored in a big drawer uh, like half of a big drawer so I went there to check how much yarn I had and uh, technically I had like 500 grams so I was not imagining that I will need more but it's uh, drops by Nepal so the, the main uh, yarn sorry i'm all over the place today so it's yeah it's uh, drops uh, nepal and um, in white and then also cesia uh, vivian by cesia mohair also in white 
And I checked and I uh, discovered that I have only two uh, skeins left. I had maybe like this much left from the previous skein and I was uh, just at this point i was like okay there is no way that i will the two skeins will be enough for the whole for both sleeves so i started a new skein and um, at some point i added the second one and uh, again this is more or less what i have left so i have two of these uh, pieces left these two together equal to like 22 grams and uh, i don't believe that one skein will help me uh, to finish everything. It's, it will be too close. So I'll have to order two more. Of course, I'm not in a hurry. It's getting quite warm here already. So this one, the, the heavy, thick sweater, I will not need for now, uh, definitely. So it's not, I, I would just would love to finish it only just plainly because I want to get stuff done. Next whip is uh, something that I'm kind of also working quite actively on. It's called uh, Snuggle Puddle Vest by Zanetti Knits. And um, I, it's not going to look like anything at this point, but I'm at actually in quite a good place. I, um, here we are. So I have the part of the back. I have one uh, front side, front, front piece, and I have the other one, it's like about a half. I just have the last uh, part of uh, increases to do here. Then I will be able to, uh, put it in the round and uh, connect it in the round. This is proceeding quite fast. Uh, if you would say that yarn looks quite noodly, it because it is, it's reclaimed yarn from a sweater. I believe I spoke about it before. Uh, it I bought it on Vinted from someone. Uh, it was um, kind of a bigger size, but it was kind of falling apart also. It has it had many holes. So I'm in this sense, I'm not feeling that bad about it because uh, any per person of any size could have bought that sweater, but you couldn't wear it as it was. You needed to do something with the yarn. Uh, it was Brooksfield wool and cashmere. And the composition is 70% um, uh, lana merino uh, and 30% uh, cashmere. So it's nice. Um, it's nice composition. It's a little bit like heathered. Uh, this is my little swatch that they made before. And overall, I um, it is quite noodly, but not, not that bad. Not, not as bad as uh, some other ones, so I didn't soak the yarn. And this one is already, like this part, I just steamed it before, and it just bloomed perfectly, beautifully. So I'm very excited about this. The next project I have here in this bag, and uh, the, um, I was not planning to knit it, honestly, uh, but I accidentally, I have this problem that uh, some people under purchase yarn and uh, I think it definitely happened to me with the salty days, uh, even though I don't know how, because honestly, like I counted and yeah. But normally me, I'm the person who over purchased. And um, when I was buying Drops Air for a turtle dove cardigan or for something else, I was like still planning. I just wanted to have a gray, uh, gray cardigan and turtle dove won by far. But the, um, when I was buying it, I just saw that it's quite a thick yarn and it has like, I, I just looked at the grams, not in the meters and um, it's super light. And so for turtle dove cardigan, I used only like five skeins and I had 10. And so I needed to do something about it. And I started to knit um, a sweater. It's called, this is not a sweatshirt from uh, Knitting for Olive. Um, here is the, here is what, what I have at this point. Obviously I'm also not working on it that much at this point because I'm not going to wear it now. But on the other hand, it's just the, the idea that I want to have a simple, um, a simple, a little bit, maybe chunkier um, sweater, uh, raglan sweater. And uh, I also wanted to get rid of the yarn, basically, because I have now other projects for it. And that one fit all the criteria and I really like how it looks. And uh, here's the swatch. As you see, like again, the, the stitch definition is not the best. And it kind of makes me nervous because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist in that. Uh, I started knitting when I was about six years old and for years I was working on my tension and on like having nice stitch definition and everything. And of course it definitely depends on the yarn. And so at this point it kind of makes me feel like I'm kind of went back. But anyways, I'm planning to finish that one somewhere by fall. Uh, another thing that I want to show you uh, out of the like really processes 
uh, that maybe you saw before. Yeah, first of all, um, there's my little project bag uh, that I made. Uh, I have a sock. I have half of a sock. <laughs> Not even like half of a pair, just half of one sock. Uh, here we are. I just made the heel flap. Um, have two pairs of uh, needles here. These ones are just bamboo long ones that I used for the heel flap. And then these small uh, circular ones from Knit Pro. Uh, it's 2.25, I believe. I think so. Uh, see the texture? Sorry, I need to cover my face, I think. Okay. Um, this is the, um, I believe it's Superwash um, yarn hand dyed yarn that I bought from one of the knitters on uh, Instagram who was uh, distashing and um, as of now I really like how it looks and it looks like it's going to fit me at this point quite nice. Um, I really hope it, nothing will happen to get them extend to the same level as the other ones did because that was that was just sad. Then I have uh, this bag. And this is my uh, travel, not even travel, it's like car project. So I normally knit it in uh, when we're driving somewhere and like I'm not driving, normally me and my boyfriend, we take turns. Uh, I drive there and he drives back or vice versa. And normally if I have something to knit, I'm working on this. Uh, this is, um, it's quite difficult to explain. I saw this idea from one of Ukrainian knitters. Her channel is called uh, Knitter Valentina. And um, she just has this beautiful uh, shawl that is kind of like a long scarf, but with a hole for the neck and with the, with the collar. And um, so she wears it, you can wear it as a gilet, you can wear it as a wrap, you can wear it as a, like in many different ways. I just love the idea. And uh, then I saw the same type of idea, but made in a, in a bit of a different way from this, um, I will insert the photo. I'm really sorry. I don't remember now how it's called. Uh, it's something like uh, Elise, but it's not Alize. It's like E L Y something like that. Anyways, I will insert the information uh, down below. And um, I saw it how th how the neck was made, how the collar was made, and I really loved it. So I'm trying to mix both of them. And again, once again, I'm not super in a hurry to knit it because I'm not going to wear it right now. Uh, I love this Bordeaux color. And this yarn I bought in Moldova, it's a Turkish yarn. I will speak about it um, maybe in some future videos. Mm, it's called Alize Alpacarial. And uh, it's like half, uh, fifty-five percent, I believe, acrylic and fifty percent uh, and forty-five percent um, uh, alpaca and wool. But it's quite nice to the touch. And I honestly didn't want to invest in like, something super like fancy to make a just a long scarf, basically. So this is it. I wanted. I also wanted to try this yarn because I'm never like here in Italy. I don't have um, access to. Turkish yarns the way that you have probably in Ukraine uh, because I know that many Ukrainian knitters they knit with uh, with Alize and with other uh, Turkish yarns. I didn't have this experience so I wanted to try out and for now this one I kind of like because it's it's fluffy it kind of covers the all the holes and everything and it's quite nice to knit and the stitch definition is quite nice. Another whip that I'm very excited to speak to you about Sorry, I need to pick up the basket because it's, it became huge, uh, but not as huge as it should be. It's my uh, Shallography by Stephen West. Uh, here is how it is now. I arrived to the part with bobbles. Uh, before that, there were like slip stitch uh, triangles. Then there were these things. I don't know if it's, I couldn't, when I was looking at the, uh, shawls that were already made by other knitters. I couldn't understand what it was, but it's this kind of like ridges that are also giving like very nice texture. Uh, before that, there was these ones. They're also slip stitch, uh, eye cord loops, like lots of, I think last time I showed it to you, maybe I was here, I believe. I don't remember if I made the eye cord loops or not. Anyways, it's growing. It's becoming very pretty. I added two new colors. So now it's, I, I cannot even tell you how many colors we have here. You're supposed to have five. I believe I have like eight or nine or something like that. But I like, 
it might be weird between this uh, like kind of like purplish color uh, to add also Bordeaux color, but I really like how it looks. And it's supposed to be a crazy shawl. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be like this. It's Stephen West design. I added these two yarns. These are obviously new skins. Um, first one is Drops Fable Unicolor. It's uh, this Bordeaux. It's 113. And uh, the other one is this one. Uh, that I used on the triangles and I really like it. I wanted some uh, kind of like gradient uh, variegation. I don't know how to call it. And this one is a uh, fable print, uh, na color number 904. Uh, really enjoy working on this shawl, enjoying it so much. Um, I took some of the white yarn from here, from my uh, for my project basket uh, to knit this bonnet for my niece and um, but I think I'm still okay I have quite a lot left and uh, I, th I have few things left here like a few stages but they're like now it's kind of growing in size so these ones will take some time and I don't again I'm not in a hurry to finish this one because it's something that I work from time to time on and when I'm getting to board of stockinette or something like that and so it's it's just nice to it's just nice to have a project like that where you can from time to time you can pick it up and have fun with it another progress that i started and it's something that is quite springy for me even though the color will not tell it to you uh, it's this green um it's also drops sorry yeah uh, drops soft tweed and the color is um I cannot see the number 17 but I remember that it's called a spinach pie it's this uh, green tweed situation and I started no frills uh, cardigan by uh, petite knit I wanted to move away a little bit from her designs because yeah because for many reasons but the this one that was the one that I fell in love with because I want uh, a thinner cardigan for spring and I already see myself wearing this one and uh, white cami and uh, a pair of jeans and nude loafers this is my idea and also my uh, Pauline bag uh, that is kind of like caramel color anyways uh, I started I made the band uh, and I started increases uh, and that's it I now that I'm kind of like I focused at some point I focused more on the salty days and uh, it was the thing that I was knitting now I'm a little bit more focused on the uh, snuggle vest and uh, I'm this one also like I'm going to take it out out of hibernation a little bit because this is the time when I want to wear it and this is the cardigan that's supposed to be super long and I'm plan not planning to make it this long because I will have nowhere to wear it and uh, I will not have we don't have this weather here in the in on Sicily to like the, when people speak about you know like a oh, chilly summer night and you can wear a small cardigan never happens like literally never happens summer is super hot super humid you don't need any cardigans here you can barely wear a tank top so yeah uh, it, it might take me forever and then I will uh, wear it in autumn or I will manage to make it until the length that they prefer now but also it's quite a small needles uh, it's um, I believe I I didn't it was the first time that it didn't hit the gauge and I needed to size down in the needles because I normally I'm quite normal knitter I'm like I'm normally fitting the the, the suggested needle size but here it the suggested needle size is four and I had to size down to 3.75 so yeah it's kind of small gauge uh okay i believe these are all of my uh current whips no sorry i have one 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 last left uh, this is actually a present i started this as a present for my friend uh it became super warm super fast so it's she's not I'm, i don't believe that i'm not i'm going to give it to her this year um i started making sophie's shawl okay it's it's a bit confusing i don't have sophie shawl uh, pattern i have sophie scarf pattern and um, it's just very easy to figure out what is the sophie shawl measurement and uh, i i'm not going to buy the same pattern with like just very minor modification so i just i'm adapting it i'm adapting sophie scarf to sophie shawl uh, this is what i have for now uh, i have this uh, 
tag that says handmade. Um, I, I bought them in Ukraine when I was there in l last summer. And um, this is where I am. Uh, this yarn is also Alize. I bought it in uh, Moldova. It's Angora Gold. And I really didn't like it that much. So for me, I would have never used it, but it's 80% uh, acrylic and 20% wool. Um, I bought it, I will explain to you why. Uh, my friend is not going to, I don't think she, she will, she's about to have a small baby and everything. This one is going to be easier to take care of. Uh, I'm not, as I said, currently working on it. So it's, it's on the, on this cord, uh, but I'm going to return to it and I'm knitting it in two uh, strands. So I have it here caked up here. And um, it's two strands of uh, Alize Angora Gold. Um, <clears throat> again, not an active whip, but something that I started and didn't finish. Now I would like to speak to you about my uh, plants. And uh, I know that you will probably tell me, well, last time you spoke about your plants and none of that happened almost. So like only a few things out of the ones that I was speaking about. Sorry, I'm checking here on my laptop. I was speaking about my plans and I said that I want to make the um, pole sweater by Morica Knits. Didn't even start that. I still need to make six cakes from that huge bobbin of uh, uh, very tiny merino wool. And uh, I'm like, I will, but not now. And also I'm not in the, in the need of merino mohair sweater right now. I received the mohair for that one and it's going to happen, just it's going to happen later. Uh, Snuggle Puddle West I'm working on, uh, Birds of a Feather uh, by Andrea Maury, it's a shawl. I bought the pattern, I still haven't started it because I have the Stephen West shawl and then I have the Venus shawl and for now I'm like uh, and I have also the, the the one that in Bordeaux color, the one that I'm uh, experimenting with. So um, yeah, it's not going to be not going to happen for now. I'm a little bit shawled out for now. Uh, then I said that I will make a Harlow sweater and a Harlow sweater V-neck by Kadri. I bought the Harlow sweater pattern, but I also didn't start it just because it's it became warm so fast. I'm not in the mood to knit like a thicker uh, sweater. Uh, then I said that I will knit Hermione everyday socks and I started them and this is exactly the, the yarn that I wanted to start them in. Um, Suave socks by uh, Amanita didn't start them. And then I said that I will, uh, would love to make a Fatherland Cowl uh, by Olga Putana Designs and uh, the design is not published yet. <laughs> I was um, so hopeful about that. I'm actually like, I'm, I'm not sure if I spoke about this. It was just my plans, but I hope I, I, I think I did. The designer said that she will not, uh, like it, it will be on her Ravelry in a bit, but she doesn't know when. And uh, then Dagmar's uh, shirt by Petit Knit, all done. All done, going to travel to my niece today. I am sending a pack today to my family. Some things for my mom and some things for my niece. Um, Okay, so my other plans. For some of them I already have yarn and like swatches and everything, so I will try to show them to you. First one, um, I have this yarn. Uh, I Okay, the, <laughs> I need to start from the pattern, I think. There is this pattern by Petit Knit again, and uh, it's called Mod T. And um, I would have never looked even at the pattern because it's something that I don't wear. It's kind of like this, uh, it has a collar and it has buttons and it has like short sleeves and I'm not uh, and it's not something that I'm that interested in because it also has silk mohair in that and I'm like again I don't live in the climate where you can have a t-shirt with uh, mohair in it like not going to happen uh, it's too either warm or cold it's not like th th this weather is not happening here and then I saw that there is one uh, project on Ravelry uh, that uh, updated, upgraded, uh, remade, uh, adapted, uh, I don't know how to say it, tweaked this um, this tea and uh, I don't remember now the name of the knitter, I will leave the link down below as well because that one, that was what convinced me. Uh, she made it with long sleeves, with stripes and uh, without buttons, just with the placket. So, um, and she used uh, Lana Gatto Merino Cot I went to, but she made it in white and some sort of like orange terracotta something color. Um, when I was in Budapest, I went to one of the shops and uh, I bought the contrast color. So this one, it's kind of like, uh, it's called uh, 14, 
527 and um, it's kind of like I don't know, like I would call it turquoise in my vision of the world but it's kind of like petroleum something like that um, it's a mix of uh, merino and cotton uh, which is great for spring and then uh, but why didn't have enough and I was like okay there is no need for me to carry it from Budapest to Palermo if I can order it it's Italian wool um, so I ordered it um, recently I still didn't start I didn't even make a swatch because this one arrived yesterday and uh, this is what I'm planning to make with it I will insert the photos and everything you will see and uh, I will leave all the information below but this is one of the one of the um, uh, plants that I have like for exactly this moment in time uh, another one that I'm planning to knit I already have the yarn kicked up it's a uh, drops flora in this uh, magenta color and um, <clears throat> I'm planning to knit the my favorite things knitwear blouse number one I know that it's not a size inclusive brand and I'm uh, kind of I was kind of conflicted about that but this uh, pattern I believe it's a little bit more size inclusive uh, than uh, many of her other designs it goes from XS to 4XL so it's kind of like almost there I would say and um, I bought this yarn uh, with the idea that I will make a salty day sweater in this color uh, but at, as of this as of now I'm not going to, to do it because I'm a little bit tired of that pattern, even though it's, it was quite fun. It was nice, potato chippy, Moorish and everything. And I loved working on that. And I'm planning to maybe make another one in the future, but not straight ahead. And so I have 10 skeins of, uh, of this color. I needed to kick them up because I started from the beginning of the ball of one of them and it was so tangled. I was like, no way in hell it's going to happen. So I, um, I made the, um, the swatch. I frogged it because yeah I made the swatch with this uh, needles it's uh, five uh, millimeter from uh, Chaogu uh, Chaogu I um, I only have this ones from them it's uh, the fixed ones uh, number five and anyways uh, I tried it works well so I'm going to knit that blouse it's a nice design and I think that I really want some color and this is one of the contrast colors that I that I actually uh, use recently um, I'm kind of fell out of love with red a little bit because I used to wear red and uh, this is my like pop of color fun color that I wear in summer but also not only in the summer and I wanted to have a sweater in this color and now I will have it another one that I uh, kind of I have a swatch for but I didn't start um, here is the swatch um, and here is the yarn it's again drops charisma um, I again maybe I should have started with that I'm knitting mostly with drops I have other type of yarns that I'm trying to branch out to but drops is what is available and affordable to me right now uh, also like Lana Gatto and everything but then again it's like it just depends on what I need and what I have what I can have and what I can afford so maybe at one point I will be able to afford and enjoy all of the beautiful hand-dyed yarns but it's not the point for me yet so anyways um, this is the swatch as I said and uh, the thing that I'm the the sweater that I'm going to knit it's called uh, cherry genser with stripes uh, it's from this beautiful booklet by Sandes Garen and it actually I wanted to have it so badly that um, as you may know um, in majority of cases first of all they sold out so fast like it's almost impossible to find them and in the other thing is that when you can find them uh, most probably they will not sell them to you if you don't buy any uh, Sandes Garn yarn and so I to order this one and another one that I have but that one is not like from here I, I have majority of my future plans from here um, to buy these two I needed to order like they were quite okay they said at least one bowl so I bought this bowl of um, uh, tin silk mohair and uh, so the cherry ganser uh, with stripes I'm planning to knit and I will knit just that uh, because I destroyed my uh, stripe hype sweater from Kutava Kika and this one I like because it has um, short rows and everything um, it's not going to be again immediate project but I swatched I know that it will work I have the yarn I'm like I'm good to go 
and um, from this one I thought that I will mix it with the yarn that I had for the hat that green one that I showed in the previous video uh, it doesn't look good at all together and uh, on the other hand I kind of fell in love with cumulus blouse cumulus cumulus I can never pronounce that I have no idea how, how it should be um, and um, I saw it again uh, on uh, Woozy by Celine's podcast and I really like her version of the green uh, green cumulus blouse I'm thinking about that I'm not sure because to, in order to knit that one I need to buy uh, seven more skins I think or at least six and um, I, I don't know if I will do that I don't know when I will do that but anyways I, I have this one skin and then uh, from here again there are some other uh, sweaters that I would love to knit uh, first of all it's this one it's called uh, Yul Julius 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 Jules anyways um, Genser it's uh, as everyone says it's kind of like their uh, answer to uh, Ranunculus uh, but I saw it on the um, podcast that is called Tangerine Knits. I really like her. I really enjoy what she does and uh, how she speaks about it. And uh, she knitted this one in uh, red for Lunar New Year. And I don't live in Asia anymore, um, but I used to. I celebrated a few of Lunar New Years in my life and uh, I hope it's not. <laughs> I will celebrate in the future as well. And so for me it would be quite... Um, I'm, I'm already thinking about Christmas sweater. So Christmas and uh, Lunar New Year sweater, number one, it can be this one. And I have this... Um, it's become, it's, it looks a little bit more orangey on the camera. I don't know why. It's a little bit more uh, muted uh, red. It's mohair. I bought from someone, uh, from some lady who was distashing uh, online. I buy, I bought quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, bobbin scones from her, and I'm planning to buy more uh, because she has quite nice uh, yarns that are I Italian yarns. It's quite a lot of mohair. Here is the, here is the thread, and uh, again, it's not an immediate plan, but this is what I'm. I'm thinking to make uh, once the autumn will come and as I said it's not as orange the orange color wouldn't look that great on me uh, but this one um, is going to go there and then another one that I'm really attracted to in this uh, there are two that I really like here but first one is this one it's called uh, Guernsey Ganser um, which is kind of I have a lot of alpaca from uh, from We Are Knitters and um, because I had this story that I bought a kit from them a few years ago and I never used it because the pattern was very bad. I'm really sorry once again like if you love their patterns I like great for you. Me personally I had such a bad experience with it because it arrived it was like of course the one that you need to sew the pieces back together but it was like literally four rectangulars and there was no idea in that. It was just four rectangulars with bubbles, and uh, so in the end I didn't knit it. I said, and I think I showed it to you, that I was trying to make no frills sweater with bubbles, uh, and I figured out how to insert the bubbles also in the short rows and everything, and uh, I frogged it a few days ago because I was just like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like I, I was looking at it, and I was feeling like that sweater was becoming a chore, and this is not how I want to live my life. So. Um, it can be uh, with the addition of uh, mohair it can be it can become this one and then another one that i really like is this one it's kind of like it's very simple but it's uh, very stunning it's called frankie genser cost edition but i i don't know which yeah it's just a simple uh, raglan with the very long uh, twisted rib uh, bottom and uh, sleeve endings uh, so again very good uh, value uh, for the price, I believe it's like eight euro compared to Lina magazine that is uh, beautiful and different fabric, and different uh, paper, and different type of like without taking anything away from it. But uh, Lina magazine costs twenty four, I believe twenty four or twenty six euros right now. And uh, once again, it, it's worth it if you know that you are going to knit many things from there. And I have many of them, many of the magazines because I see the value in that. But this one costs eight euro. If you find it <laughs> that's the problem if you find it and you also need to to buy some yarn with it but in my opinion this one like exactly this this one it's really worth it uh, what else what else um, 
I have some other plans, uh, but maybe without any, like some acquisitions, let's go fast through them. Uh, first of all, I have some uh, sock yarn that this one is a concept by Katya. I ordered together with the Think Silk Mohair and the, um, and the booklets. Uh, it's sock yarn. I still don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it will definitely be socks because I don't see the shawl in this color on myself. And this one I bought uh, Regia Premium Silk. I bought it in Budapest uh, from the same shop where I bought uh, uh, Lana Gato Merino Coat. And I just fell in love with this uh, pink gradient. It should be very pretty. This one, I think it can be also some sort of a shawl. I'm still planning my birds of a feather. So I want it to be like this beautiful pink immersion. And um, yeah, maybe it will be part of it. Maybe not. We will see. And then another thing that uh, I also kind of, um, when I bought this uh, red mohair, this one, uh, she was selling it as, as a double pack and uh, she was selling also the blue one, this like navy blue. Um, once again, also quite a nice quality mohair. And then uh, another lady was selling her um, also like this touching before moving houses. And uh, I bought this huge bobbin of, uh, you see it's a tweed. I don't know if you can see. It's this uh, like navy blue tweed with orange speckles, uh, orange and uh, uh, just light blue speckles. It's uh, a bit thinner, but, sorry, here. It's a bit thinner, but I think that by combining them together, I can uh, make myself once again the turtle dove cardigan, but in a better, in a better quality. Okay, I believe this is it. Then another acquisition that I have is my new pouch for all things uh, connected to knitting. I have everything here, like stitch markers, um, some uh, small snips, uh, like other things. I'm not, maybe one day I can make a video about that if anyone will be interested. But the, the most important thing is that this uh, design, it's, um, uh, it's inspired by the works of Ukrainian painter, um, very famous one, Maria Primachenko. And uh, it says, we are all flowers of the sun. This was one of her, was written on one of her paintings. She was a primitivist artist, uh, born and raised in the village. And uh, this is how she was painting. And uh, this is just, I, I just find it so beautiful. It's kind of like, like this. Here, uh, here you have one pocket and here you have another one. And inside there is a big compartment. So I'm very happy about that one. It's one of the things that makes me happy every day. Okay, I believe this is it. This, that was a lot. That was a lot. Now I need to film it once again in Ukrainian. Um, thank you so much for listening. I hope you like it. Thank you so much. Uh, see you in my next video. Bye-bye.